Hello again, viewers. Oh, we're back with Ko to take a look at what changes during the second Death Wars invasion, starting with what looks like another battle against Tama. No, it seems he's had enough of the Death Force, but Orochi's taking issue with his departure, so we end up teaming against her. Ko is still running the same force that defeated the Cosmic Dragon. This marks the first time in the game in which the player is teamed up with a Fortress Borg. Although to compensate, the game pits you against another Fortress Borg, Antares. And while its cannons have less shots than Death Arcs do, its spaceships more than make up for that threat. As you can see how Orange Fighter doesn't have much left, despite only have one cannon shot. And the ships manage to take it down, bringing Acceleration Ninja out to the front. And while that slow Valkyrie will be quite dangerous if it manages to slow me down, as Acceleration Ninja losing its speed is pretty helpless. Tama managed to take it down pretty quickly, while I really just kept it busy. Unfortunately, Demon Wing's Creeping Souls can catch Acceleration Ninja even when it's running at full tilt, so I may just have to content myself with dealing as much damage as I can before getting KO'd. Especially with the enemy activating Power Burst, Acceleration Ninja isn't long for this world. Uh, next up is Hatchet Knight. And again, I'm not sure why those Creeping Souls didn't turn at me, but I'm not really complaining. And now that their Power Burst has ended, we activate ours and swing for the fences. And if you're wondering what I was looking at back there, it was one of Antares' spaceships. Uh, you can lock onto them, but there's really no reason to. Even if you do manage to hit it, it'll just return to Antares. Yeah, well, Hatchet Knight's taken a beating, but it can still put a hurt on the almost immobile Antares here. Deathwing seems content to fire at me and not close in. Which is just fine by me as Antares' spaceships take down another Borg. And next up comes Gatling Gunner. We've dealt enough damage to Antares to ensure it won't be around much longer either. And now we're down to what looks to be Orochi's final Borg, a Victory Baron. Kind of an opposite to Victory Duke, as it transforms into Victory Jet as opposed to Victory Tank. Though between Death Arc and Gatling Gunner, and especially when we pop Power Burst, it's not going to be around much longer. And that's game, with the finishing blow going to Tama. We showed them! I'll give you guys an A for effort. Darn! Uh, no prizes, but we did manage to repel Orochi again. And Tama even joins the Gacha Force. So that's minus one to the Death Force, and plus one to us. All in all, a good fight. And next up, we're taking a bit of a detour. And going to clean up Serenity Street with Kakeru. Uh, Ko's changed the Force up a bit. And this is pretty much a standard defeat all the enemies. I'm opening with... Demon Samurai, as he's at his best when he can clear out some of the cheaper Borgs at the beginning and get his swords powered up a bit. Now this battle's marked as tough stuff, and while it may not look it with a couple of Death Borgs as an opening, it pretty quickly shows its face with beam tanks and gold heroes aplenty. Unfortunately, the problem of Death Demon Samurai makes itself known pretty quickly, as the swords get long enough to get you in awkward positions when you swing, but not so long as to be able to hit enemies from outside their range. As you 
can see, even if I manage to land a hit, I can't follow up because they're too far away. But if I try to get closer, I get knocked around like that. Oh, it's a good thing ally hits are reduced damage. As Kakeru took a bit of a beating there. And we see the first beam tank of the match. I really gotta be careful here, as one bad melee attack could pretty much end up with a drill in my face. Just like that. And Demon Samurai down. I take a page out of Kakeru's book and field another normal ninja. As I should have said before, normal ninja is incredibly good for its cost. At only 150 GF energy, it makes a great addition to any force that can spare it. Of course, I can't use my best attacks, the melee ones, unless the beam tank is otherwise occupied. As taking a drill, even at 99, would probably take out normal ninja. Especially what at 51. We managed to isolate this gold hero pretty quickly. So we can focus on it and try and get it down before gold setup happens. And we don't manage it, but we've hit it enough that one more hit will take it down. Of course, this time he's got a beam tank and Tau as backup. And while the Tau is just kind of an annoyance, that beam tank is certainly dangerous. And while he activated Gold Setup, I had an opening, so I took it while Kakeru was occupying the beam tank's attention. Well, oh, no, that's the end of my normal ninja. And next up comes Drill Robot. And with Power Burst, we make short work of the Beam Tank and the Gold Hero there. Good. Unfortunately, we lose a good chunk of it waiting for the next enemy Borg to warp in. But a single Titan Robot isn't too much of a threat that we'd need it. Now, like Drill Robot, Titan Robot does have the Javelin Shot that can go through walls but it doesn't get a chance to charge up and fire them before we take it down. And even though the ground drills miss, the drill missiles are enough to take it down alone. And we see the next squad. A Cyber Girl Hyper, a Cyber Ninja, and a Beam Gunner. Three incredibly powerful Borgs that are just even better together. As you can see, a quick combo there it takes off a good chunk of life. And I'm not sure if I finished off Cyber Ninja there, or if Beam Gunner did. But either way, I'm grateful for the it's gone. A bad melee attack sends me right into Beam Gunner's beam shot. And that's the end of Drill Robot. Uh, next up is Gatling Gunner again. And with Power Burst, you make short work of both these Borgs. On the next Borg that is taken out pretty quickly is Victory King. And we meet the second combined Borg. Uh, this is Cyber Machine Genbu. And it's essentially like a city you was. It's made from Cyber Mars and Machine Blue. And I was lucky he was firing downward as I got bounced away, rather than losing Gatling Gunner to his charge beam. And thankfully for me, the AI is programmed to dodge Gatling Gunner streams, even when I can't really do much damage, as even Gatling Gunner can only modestly damage it. Still, the time it spent dodging did manage to use up their power burst. Now it's down to its component Borgs, uh, which take much more damage from a string of Gatling Gunner shots. Uh, well, Gatling Gunner won't be around too much longer. Uh, it doesn't have enough HP to let them build up another transformation before Cyber Mars is taken down. Uh, 
And while it couldn't get rid of Machine Blue before losing Gatling Gunner, Neo G Red is more than enough to take down this injured one. Still, I definitely don't want to get careless, as losing here would be awful. Still, one last power burst. Uh, this is our match. We showed them! We did it! Oh, we even get a few prizes this time. Uh, seems Ko's managed to build his own gold hero. Now it'll be a nice addition to his force. A couple more crystals on a board. Not too inspiring, but it needed to be done. Uh, but that's all for Ko for now. Uh, next up is Rush with what looks to be the battle against Tama. But again, he's decided he has enough of the Death Force and is leaving. Though, curiously enough, Orochi doesn't object this time. I'll be opening this fight with Proto Mars. And I know I said enough of prototypes, but this is the last one we have to go through. And you can think of him as Proto Red Plus. And it's the same basic setup, but he moves a little faster and does a little more damage. So if you can spare the points, it's definitely worth it. Now you can see with Orochi not here, uh, the enemy didn't field Antares. Instead, it's a series of smaller Borgs, in this case, a bunch of teleport ninjas. And they also have a lot more GF energy available, because Antares isn't eating it all up. So in some ways this battle is more difficult, especially seeing as teleport ninjas can be a bit dangerous when the camera makes it so they're harder to see. And of course, if you saw the Hatchet Knight warping in, those are much more of a threat to Tama than anything the previous force fielded. So it's kind of a question of, do I take out the Teleport Ninjas that are a bigger threat to me, or the Hatchet Knights that are a bigger threat to Tama? Uh, fortunately with Powerverse, I don't have to choose. Still, this is not a fight where you want to stand still. You gotta keep moving at all times. And also, this is one of the fights where the randomness of Gacha Force shows its place as the first Borgs you'll see will keep appearing this match, but those Borgs will change every time you do it. So you might see have an easier or more difficult time of this, depending on what happens. Though one note, this battle will not appear on your first playthrough as it only happens if you've managed to defeat Orochi every time she appears, and you're on a later playthrough. Now your first time, you'll always fight Orochi here, so you'll always have to deal with Antares. Now, and you can see that Proto Mars is having a much easier time of dealing with Demon Wing than Acceleration Ninja did. Now, between Death Arc and Proto Mars, oh, we can build in a power burst fairly quickly. And we've looked to gotten through about half of the enemy's GF energy. Yeah, I eat a good spin there, but return the favor with an up slash. And the second Demon Wing takes the field. While those hatchets can certainly do a number on me, because I can move out of the way and get stunned and knocked away from them, they aren't as damaging as they would be otherwise, so better me than Tama. I built up Power Burst again, but I'm saving this one as Proto Mars has been whittled down a bit too much and I'd really rather not waste it. Uh, 
Tama looks to be in good shape at least. And seeing as he's down to his partner, it'd be his only boring force. Now I think we've taken down enough of the enemy that I could finish it alone if I had to. Not that I'd want to. I greatly appreciate the help. Ah, uh, and with a surprise teleport slash. Proto Mars gets bounced and is taken out by the teleport ninjas I said were such a threat to him. And next up is Titan Robot. And while that Machine Red is kind of a threat, I'll leave it to when everything else is taken care of. And Titan Robot is another one of the Machine Borg Transformers. And it's a combination of Proto Titan and Titan Tank. And while Titan, Ro well, Titan Robot's head bullets are just as awful as they were on Proto Titan, uh, the Titan Tank's lasers more than make up for it, and it still has the excellent javelin shot as a charge beam. Uh, you can't rapid fire them as when they're a charge attack, as even in Power Burst. You can't fire them as quickly, but it's still enough to give us the win. No, and in this version of the battle, oh, Tama apparently brings prizes. Quite a number of them, in fact. Maybe he was worried you wouldn't accept him. Though we did before, I don't see why this would be different. So once again, the greater Tri-City area is safe, and the Gotch Force gets a new ally. Even if he is apparently a really messy eater. And next up, we take our detour, and apparently we're expected to retake Serenity Street by ourselves this time. Let's do this. I'm fielding an extra G Red, and this is the alt colored version, the reward for beating the third playthrough, as this is still a pretty difficult fight. You saw it was like last time, and doing it by yourself is even more so. Now this version of the battle appears if you've managed to defeat Sho on his every appearance. And unlike the battle at the Greater Triceratops area, you can get this one in your first playthrough. It's just quite difficult to defeat Sho that first time at Little Hill. I guess the game thinks you can handle anything if you manage that. Still, I definitely don't want to get surrounded, as losing your Borgs too quickly is a great way to ensure you lose this fight. And this is really more battle of attrition than anything, as these early Borgs aren't too much of a threat, but they can whittle you away and leave you too soft to take out the harder Borgs later on. So I'm keeping my distance against these melee specialists, except when I can close in for a quick flip kick. Or my own sure you can. I really just want to make sure I go in at an advantage, as I can't make too many stupid mistakes here. Uh, one on one with the beam tank. Not exactly ideal conditions, but as long as I can stay out of its drill range, I shouldn't have too much trouble. I've managed to build the first power burst. I pop it just to get rid of that. And next up is the Gold Hero Tau team. And thanks to power burst, I managed to do a number on Gold Hero. I might even manage to take it out before it sets up. Though it seems the second wave is, didn't like that and has already shown up even though the Tau was still there. Again, I'm just kind of, I don't want those towers knocking me around while that beam tank is trained on me. So I end up kiting it and them, and it's kind of difficult to do, by myself at least. What's wrong? Get a grip. 
Oh, no, it seems I don't have to do it by myself anymore. Uh, yes, if you manage to defeat Sho on his every appearance, uh, he will join you in this fight. Uh, it's set on time, not number of Borgs defeated. So if you wanted, you could just kite those original wave of death wargs until Sho makes his appearance. But really, why would you? You fight as hard as you can, and the help comes when it comes. That still shows Anubis Wing is quite powerful, but his explosive shot is probably going to cause me no end of trouble. Oh, and with Blue G Red taken down, Machine Blue takes the stage. I like Proto Blue before him, he's essentially a big gun Borg. He's even got the crappy melee attacks to prove it. Though, no. he's essentially Proto Blue Plus. He moves a little faster and does a little more damage. And he's got a little more HP too. Uh, but now that I've got my own explosives, I can be a thorn in Sho's side just like he is in mine. Yeah, we aren't exactly the best synergized here, but we do okay. Uh, this Titan robot can't really do much. It, it gets off a couple of javelin shots this time, but it doesn't manage to hit either one of us. And because it's either getting knocked around by explosives or through Anubis Wing's especially powerful melee attacks, it doesn't get a chance to do much. And you even managed to save Power Burst for the Cyber Squad. And while I eat a beam laser straight to the back, I'm doing okay, thanks to Power Burst. Still, it would have been nice if I hadn't happened, and if I hadn't shot Show there. But you live and learn. And with Beam Gunner down, and Cyber Girl Hyper following, only Cyber Ninjas left. And while I can't seem to get that last hit during the Plasma Tackle, uh, Sho gets his revenge quickly enough. And next up, who didn't last very long the last time we did this, is Victory King. Now he's the only transforming Borg that has more than two forms, as he can become both Victory Jet and Victory Tank. Of course, it's not too impressive against the two of us here, but it is quite fun to use in action. Though at four pieces, it's a bit of time before you get your own. And one more shot takes it down. And it seems the Death Force bodyguards have something to say about our new team up. Uh, which is okay in my book, as we've got Power Burst. Unfortunately, we weren't able to take down at least one of them before it ended. But with Sapphire Knight as weakened as it is, I think I can get rid of it before losing Machine Blue. Yes. Well, unfortunately, a Ruby Knight Bomb takes it out before I can finish them off. And Machine Red has to finish the job. Now this is essentially Proto Mars Plus. He moves a little, again, moves a little faster, deals a little more damage. It also costs a little more, and his special ability, he has the special ability of fusion, unlike his prototype. Unfortunately, I can't do that in single player mode, as I said. Delta Shift R. Suzaku Formation. Cyber Machine, Suzaku. Though, of course, that's no obstacle to the Death Force when they field their third combined machine board. Now, this is Cyber Machine Suzaku. Uh, he's combined from Cyber Mars and Cyber Atlas. Now, you've seen those remote guns flying around, and they're especially dangerous here in this fight, as if they manage to catch you while standing on the ground, they'll knock you around, but won't stun you, so you can get easily hit by a charge blast or some other damaging thing. 
uh, really, getting tagged on the ground by those is a death sentence. Or at least close enough to one that you don't want it to happen. Now, fortunately, we weather the combined form, and we retaliate with our own power burst uh, against Cyber Mars and Cyber Atlas separate. And they're certainly much less threatening when you can fight them as equals. Uh, though, I can't get too careless as Cyber Mars is still out there. And it seems Show's not going all in on it for some reason. So the, once again, I'm just trying to take it down, take at least one down quickly enough that they can't fuse again. Oh, and within a hard stun, I have to wait. Data shift on. Suzaku formation. Cyber machine, Suzaku. I was so close. Uh, but it seems we've dealt enough damage to their individual pieces that even tagging me with a full suite of remote guns isn't enough to finish the job. And we actually managed to defeat a combined Borg, a rare occurrence I can safely say. We showed them. I didn't even try. Well, we get some pretty cool prizes here, uh, mostly crystals, as the more powerful Borgs often are. But still, it is quite nice, and the real prize comes after this screen. Oh. After helping us rescue Serenity Street, Shows apparently decided not all Gotcha Borgs are his enemy. And that's all for now. Thanks for watching.